convenient locations, and one main goal, launching your successful career in the field of your choice. Rankin is where the instructor is a professional, where class is three to four times more hands-on than hands-off. And you grasp the court All our students are out working right now in the trade. People just can't supply enough workers for the workforce today. Everybody says that they need workers, but what they really need is they need good workers. Properly trained, thrown out with your subject material. And that's what Rankin provides all our students. Rankin is where you get out when you put in. Rankin is actions teaching how to words. Rankin is where you get an education that works. Rankin Technical College, professional grade.
And uh, how many of you know why you're here today? What, what, is, what is this NC3 signing day? Does anybody know what that's about? <laughs> so we just told you to show up at this point, and, and you all did. So that's good. That's very, very good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn it over to, uh, to a quick little video that's going to explain a little bit about NC3 and what it's all about. And then we'll continue from there, OK? In the meantime, just because I'm talking doesn't mean that you have to go hungry or thirsty. There are refreshments in the back, so don't be shy. If, if you want uh, something sweet to eat back there, I'm, I'm sure there's something there. There's coffee, there's water. By all means, if, if you need uh, to get a refreshment, don't let me talking stop you from doing that. Okay. So at this point, I'll turn it over and we can start the, the video on what NC3 is. you the best of luck and pass along our congratulations on the choices you're making today and the future success you're going to achieve. Congratulations on participating in this year's National Signing Day for <coughs> Welcome to National Signing Day and to your very bright future. I want to congratulate you of making this important decision. And I want to thank all the participating colleges for, for joining us on this very, very special day, uh, recognizing students from all across this United States of the value and the nobleness of technical education. This was an idea about how to engage directly with young people and bring them into great career fields. Today you're signing to the school that's going to prepare you for the quickly changing world of war. The skills you obtain in your technical education will be skills that remain with you throughout your life. Meaningful skills that you can apply, make a great living for yourself and for your family. You'll not only be ready for 
on the first job, but on the journey for a very successful career. So your interest in educating yourself not only helps you and your family, but it's also important to your community and to the nation as a whole. Today, we celebrate your commitment to become part of that great American legacy. Congratulations to the schools, instructors, and family members who support help make this momentous day possible. We are pleased to participate in National Signing Day and show these students and families our appreciation. Thank you for participating in this important day. We're very proud of you. Very glad you're joining us. I'm delighted today to join NC3, congratulating students who are signing today for Challenge and Opportunity Month. Hope has a face. <coughs> that hope begins. Congratulations to all of you. What a great day this is. This country of ours was built by the hearts, the minds, and the strength of its people. It was not by chance that we got here. It was because people dared to set their sights and achieve. NC3 celebrates you. You are the dreamers of today, the doers of tomorrow. Your signature on this National Signing Day sets your sights on success, and we are here beside you. Together, we will build, grow, and improve. There are thousands of you today, across the country, declaring your intent to achieve it. Career and technical education is the key to your bright future. That's why your instructors, your school, and NC3 are here for you. That's why our industry partners are investing in you. We want you to certify that you've got what it takes to succeed, and we know you do. We want the world to know what you are capable of. You signed today to formally continue your journey, a journey to the career that we know you deserve. You will transport us in vehicles faster and smarter than they have ever been. You will keep us safe and comfortable in buildings, stronger and brighter than they have ever been. You will use the tools and technology of today to build the tools and technology of tomorrow. You will feed us, keep us healthy, and light the way. Your creativity and ideas will enable invention, conservation, and endless possibilities for all of us. NC3 and our industry partners are proud of you. We celebrate you. So, sign for me and join us. We need you now more than ever. Congratulations and welcome. So first off, this isn't just a ranking thing, right? It's, it's the National Signing Day for NC3. NC3, of course, and you can kind of tell from the, the little logo, the National Coalition of Certification Centers, what, what Rankin has to do with that, and why Rankin really likes NC3, is it represents industry. And, and I will tell you, I'm a firm believer, firm believer that, that every educational institu institute should be preparing their students to go to work, right? That's what education is all about, is to prepare them to go to work. And ultimately, industry is what helps us determine what we need to do to prepare our students to go to work. And NC3 does just that. It, it represents many industries that represent technical education across the gamut. So there's many industries represented there, okay? Now, of course, it's really all about the students, right? These students right in the front row, they're, they're the ones that are making the decision. And we're going to talk directly to you in a little bit. But before we get too deep into that, we're going to go around, around the room and, and we're going to introduce a couple of people. So we're going to start over there. And if you will, Bill, tell us who you are and what, what you represent here at Rankin. Hey, Bill Stewart. I'm in the automotive program. I'm part of the DMA program. My name is Joe Pankey. I head up the automotive work study program. So, so Greenlee, you saw it was one of the logos up on the screen. Uh, they're, they're a wholly owned subsidiary of Emerson, right? Big name here in St. Louis, big name globally. 
And, and we're very fortunate, again, to have partners such as Greenlee because ultimately they're all about making the education better. So you say the tool vendor, yeah, okay, they'd love to sell you tools, but they're really not about that. How we partner with them is they have a pulse on what industry is doing. So industry is going to go to them and say, hey, I need a solution, I need a tool, if you will, to solve this problem. And they work with industry to then create those tools. They work with us as an educational institution then to introduce those tools and those resources to the students so that, again, you're prepared to go out there and go to work. So we, we greatly appreciate industry partners such as Greenlee and Emerson and all the other ones, Snap-on, the, the other ones that you've seen on that screen participating with us. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Chris Gassel. I am the Electrical Division Chair at Urban. Uh, my name is Sean Ray. I am the Diesel Department Chair here at Urban. Hi, I'm Latrina Rogers. I'm Director of Residential Life, also known as Student Housing here at Rankin Technical House. Welcome. Jay? Hi, I'm Jay Sports, Delicious Counselor. I'm Dan Kane. I'm the Vice President for Education. Uh, Monty, we weren't going to skip you. Who are you? So she represents the cool factor, right? What I mean by that is, is all those things, you know, I would say, uh, you know, find us on MySpace, but we don't do that anymore, apparently. Uh, so, so I won't date myself there, but the Flickr, the Instagram, if you go to rankin.edu and you scroll down to the bottom, there's a whole bunch of different logos that represent different ways to stay connected. There'll be photo opportunities today. They'll all be posted there. You can download them. You can print them. You can share them with your friends, relatives, associate, neighbors, enemies, whoever you want to share them with, right? It's all there. In addition to that, if you go to NC3's website, uh, they're also broadcasting this live. And, and if you want to share that, it'll be archived there so that you can actually uh, go there as well. So, so excellent. I'm Jared Cope. I'm a client service technician here at Rankin Technical College. Uh, Jason Hugg. I'm a client services officer. And there's one person behind the curtain, I believe. At least I, I saw that person behind the curtain. There we go. I'm the the man Boyd. behind the curtain, right? I'm Jim Boyd. Uh, I'm an instructional coordinator. And what is an instructional coordinator? Uh, responsible for quality of education. Outcomes assessed and all that other fun stuff, accreditation. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So before we get too deep into it, uh, are there any Reagan alumni in the room? There we go. <laughs> There we go, very good, and of course, yeah, excellent, yes, absolutely. So I, I always ask, I'll put you on the spot, I always ask the alumni the same thing, whenever I meet alumni out in the world, if you will, I always say, are you working? Yes. Yep. And, and what are you doing? I'm an architect. And what program did you go through here? And we didn't plan that, we did not plan, it looks like we planned, right? I will tell you time and time again, when I meet an alumni out there, I always ask the same question. It's like, are you working? What are you doing? And, and usually the answer is yes. At least that's the answer that I like to hear because ultimately there's a couple of really happy days here at Rankin Technical College. And most people, when you, when you talk about a college, the happy day that they talk about is graduation, right? That's a happy day. Uh, you know what? That is a celebratory day. It's nice, but it's not my happy day. And what I mean by that is ultimately my happy day is days like today where I get to see brand new students. And then the other happy day is when you get a job. Because it's wonderful if you graduate, but we're not done at that. We're happy when you actually get a job in your chosen career field. Because again, that's what we're all about. So besides just introducing me, I get to introduce Rankin Technical College. Hopefully all of you have met Rankin, because you've signed up and you've spent some money, or somebody has spent some money, and will continue to spend quite a bit of money for you to be here, right? But Rankin Technical College, who we are, what we do, best way to explain that is our mission. Does anybody know what our mission is here at the institution? You heard it, but just that. It's okay. What, who can paraphrase it? What's our mission? 
Take your money, teacher. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That might be an easier way to say it. We might want to consider changing that. But yeah, that, that, that's a great mission. What, what else? Who, who else? You guys that signed up, what, what is our mission? Why are you here? Why did you choose Rankin? Because somebody behind you told you you're, you're, you're going to go someplace? Okay, to, to further education in a field you want to learn in. What else? To get a job. To get a job. It's a, that's a heavy one right there, right? In fact, most people, that's the number one reason why people choose Rankin is to get a job. It's, it's, what, it's what it is, right? Now, I will tell you our mission, and those of you that are paying for it, the first part of the mission is kind of hard to swallow because, believe it or not, we are a private non-for-profit. We're not the profit. We're not the proprietary schools. When you write that check... We're private non for profit. In fact, we've got a very, very rich history. David Rankin, long, long time ago, long time ago, he had a problem that I hope each and every one of us in this room at some point in time has. He had so much money, he had no idea what he was going to do with it. He had a lot of disposable income, didn't know what he was going to do with all his money. So he went to the mayor of the city at the time, Ralph Wells, he said, You got any idea what I can do with my money? And the mayor said, you know what, let me think about it and get back to you. And the mayor came back to him with this idea of creating a school to teach the dignity of labor. That there's nothing wrong with working for a living. And specifically, there's nothing wrong with working with your hands for a living. David Rankin liked that idea. We've been doing that exact same thing right here at this location since 1907. Since 1907. Teaching the dignity of labor. In fact, students pay about 75% of what it actually costs to educate you. The other 25% comes from donations, in-kind gifts, and that endowment fund that David Rankin left us upon his death. So it was a gift to the city. We are a private, non-for-profit, degree-granting institution of higher learning. So what does degree-granting institution of higher learning mean? So we're accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. That is one of six agencies that's recognized by the United States Department of Education that says you are a real college. So you look at the United States Department of Education, they've got these agencies that go out and they set a bunch of standards, a bunch of standards that deal with everything on how classroom instruction is taught and delivered to how our finance is kept, on how do you raise money, on, on every aspect of operations of schools. you got to meet all these standards. And at that point, if you do, they say you are a college. And in fact, if you're accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, the Missouri Department of Education says, you know what, you've met their standards, you meet our standards. We are accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. So the same accrediting agency that accredits Wash U and St. Louis University and SIUE and SIUC and UMSL and, and Mizzou and all those colleges within the Midwest region of the United States, we share the same accreditation. A lot of people don't realize that. So when you're earning a certificate or degree from Rankin, whether it be a bachelor's degree or an associate degree, it's an accredited degree. It's not just a Rankin piece of paper. It's an accredited degree. So we're a private, non-for-profit, degree-granting institution of higher learning whose primary mission is to provide the comprehensive education training necessary to prepare students for employment and advancement in a variety of technical career fields. We're all about preparing students to go to work in technical career fields. We're very focused on technical career fields. Now, you look at it, we actually have about 37 different programs and certificates and degrees, and we've grouped those into five core divisions. So each and every one of you are going into one of our core divisions, specifically a department or program within that core division. But regardless of what division or what program, and whether your program is four years in length, are two semesters, one year in length, it doesn't matter. Every one of those programs fit that mission. Every one of those fit that mission. In fact, I will challenge each and every one of you new students that if you're doing something in the classroom, around campus, rank and sanctioned, right? And you don't know how it fits into that mission, by all means, by all means, ask. And if we, rank and can't answer that, <coughs> then we got to stop doing it. Because if it doesn't fit our mission, we don't do it. We're very mission-driven. That's why we've been here since 1907. Now that mission, how we carry it out, is with a three-part educational formula. Anybody know what those three parts include? Who can give me a, a one, one part of our educational formula? 
So why did you guys choose Rankin? You probably did not come here because you wanted to sit in a room like this and watch a video, right? Why did you guys come to Rankin? Hands-on experience. Hands-on, and specifically hands-on with technical education, right? So technical education is one-third of our educational formula. Yes, you will be spending a lot of time in what we call your major. On average, four hours a day, five days a week. That's just average. Some of your programs are a lot heavier on that, such as some of the certified dealer programs. Some are right at four hours, five days a week. Some are seven hours a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, four hours a day, Thursday, and Tuesday. It changes, but you're going to be spending the majority of your time in your chosen technical major. Hands-on, intensive experience, hands-on doing it. We know students learn best by doing, not by reading, writing, and talking about it, but by actually doing it. So you're going to be doing these things. That's just one-third of our educational formula. What's the second component of our educational formula? We know the stuff that you probably don't necessarily want to hear, right? What, what's the second component? I'll ask Mrs. Prim, what's the second component? General, ed General education. Now, I will tell you, when I say that, most of the students look at that as a bad term, but it's not. Why, why do you think we do general education? Why do you think we, you require, and every program here, even if it's a certificate program, requires some form of general education? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I, I will tell you, a lot of people answer that in the sense that, well, you have to because you're a quote-unquote real college, right? So you have to do the gen eds. And that's a true statement. That's not why we do it, though. We do it because you're absolutely right. Industry tells us they want employees who can read, write, communicate. They want employees who realize that this is just the beginning. You've got a lifelong learning in front of you. This is just the first step. They want employees who have an appreciation for that lifelong learning and realize that this is just the first step. So yes, a lot of people look at that general education as a, as a negative. However, industry determines what we teach. Industry has said these educational components and the technical side and the general education side are very, very important. So you're going to find out why we do what we do is really based upon industry telling us. We have advisory boards, we have industry advisory boards, we have alumni advisory boards, people who graduated one to two years out, and they ask them point blank, did you feel prepared? You went through this program, were you prepared when you went to work? And if the answer is no, then we ask, how can we be better? And we continuously improve every program on a semester cycle. It's not just a two-year cycle, we do it every semester we make the program better. That's the whole point of outcomes assessment. So that's the two components, technical education, general education. However, there is a third component. Who can tell me what the third component is? So this educational formula. New students are always so shy. By the time we get to graduation, they're, they're not nearly as shy. Because you get to spend a lot of time with, with, with your cohort, if you will. What's the third component? What do you want to take a guess? Work training. Work training. Exactly, we call it work ethic. We call it work ethic. Who, what is work ethic? Who can tell me what work ethic is? Okay, you have a job in your major. What, what's, what's work ethic? Yes? How likely you are to be hired for a job. Yeah, how likely you are to be hired for a job. So, so what are those things that you think make you more likely to be hired for a job? What are some good work ethic traits? Because there's bad work ethic too, right? What's good work ethic? What? Attitude, absolutely. Specifically, positive attitude, right? What else? Communication. Communication, being on time, right? Dressing appropriately. In fact, we've got five core work ethic traits here at Rankin Technical College, and I will tell you it includes positive attitude and approach, respectful workplace structure, honesty, putting craftsmanship into your work. All of those things we actually grade our students on every day. <coughs> So we've actually had students who have went through and passed every technical major class. They've met all the gen ed requirements, but because they did not meet that work ethic requirement, they didn't graduate from rank, and that's how serious we take it. But again, why do we do it? Because that's what industry is expecting. Industry is expecting you to be able to be technically competent, 
They're expecting you to be able to read, write, communicate, and they're expecting you to be able to exhibit those positive attitudes, approach, respect, all of those core character traits that make you a good employee. On your transcript, and I would tell moms and dads and friends, relatives, neighbors, associates out there, look at the transcripts because ultimately all three of those areas are represented on those transcripts. You're going to get grades for your technical education. You're going to get grades for your general education. Hey, look for those pieces. Again, that's what allows us to be here since 1907 in their chosen career field within six months of graduation. So everything we do is tied back to that mission, and everything we do is tied back to that educational formula. That's what we're all about. And that's, that's what Rankin Technical College is all about. Now I will tell you, you've all made a very wise decision, right? And of course, I've got a Rankin logo on my shirt, so I'm paid to say that, right? I get it. However, I really do believe that. I really do believe that. In the United States, in the United States, every job is classified into one of three areas. There's the low-skilled jobs, there's the high-skilled jobs, and there's the, there's the middle-skilled jobs. And the, the low-skilled jobs are defined as something that requires a high school diploma or less, a job that requires a high school diploma or less. The high-skilled is a four-year university degree or higher. The middle skill is somewhat more than a high school diploma, but somewhat less than a four-year university degree. And that's where we are. That's where we live. Now, I will tell you, when you look at the low-skilled jobs and the high-skilled jobs, and every job is important, but those jobs right now and into the foreseeable future, the last statistic was through 2024, right? There are more people seeking those jobs than there are jobs available. The exact opposite is true for the middle skill jobs. There are more jobs than there are people seeking those jobs. Which means, for those of you right now deciding to embark upon your career in technical education, you are going to be in an awesome position because people are going to seek you out. People are going to seek out the skills that you have. Okay? It's a great thing to be wanted and needed. It really is. Now, with that said, I will tell you, this isn't easy. Okay? This isn't easy. Uh, there's going to be people out there say, oh, you know, you went to a tech school. Oh, that's easier than a four-year university and this and that. You're going to find out that some people in your class have already been to the four-year university thing. Didn't work out for whatever reason. Or they couldn't find a job. They choose to come here. We see that number rise every year. I will also tell you this, it's a lot of work. You're going to be putting a lot of time and effort into it. And here's the deal. My commitment is to make sure that this institution provides you the resources necessary. You've got to take advantage of them. You have to take advantage of them. You're going to find out that we're not going to follow you home and do your homework for you. Not going to happen. But we're going to expect you to do your homework. That is an expectation. You're going to find out that we're not going to dress you every day before you come to Rankin Technical College, but we're going to expect you to be in your uniform when you show up. It's a huge responsibility, but the reward is awesome. I will tell you, and again, I did it in the beginning, I run into a lot of alumni because you're going to find out that we wear these logos all the time, and you can talk to any of the people in the back. They've got these logos on all the time. We go places, oh, you always run into somebody that went to Rankin or somebody that knows somebody that went to Rankin and again it's a success story more often than not it really is a huge success story we hear it time and time again I want each and every one of you to be that success story but here's the commitment you have to make if you run into trouble if you hiccup and there's going to be hiccups there's going to be something that doesn't work out. There's going to be a problem. You have to ask for help. Do not be shy and fail out. Do not be shy and fail out. Because those students who decide that they're not going to speak up, or they're embarrassed, they're whatever, you name it, those are the ones that don't make it through here. And I will tell you this, your first semester is going to be your hardest. Your first semester is going to be your hardest. We lose more students in the first semester than we do throughout the entire college career here at Rankin Technical College. You make it through that first semester, 
you'll make it the rest of the way. That's what statistics say. But you've got to make it through that first semester. Which means if you have a problem, we went through the room and we introduced a lot of people. Right? And it's everything from your instructors, your department chairs, Financial aid is here. That's a nasty, dirty word that a lot of people don't like to say and use, and it's confusing and it's complicated and all that. I will tell you, Mr. Hood in the back, financial aid's not complicated to him. How many years have you been doing financial aid? 18 years. It's not complicated to him. And there is no stupid question that you can ask him. You just have to ask him. He will help you with that financial aid because I, I, I guarantee. There's going to be a question that comes up before you actually start, and there's going to be a question that comes up while you're here. Ask the question. They're, they're here to help. General education, if you find that you're struggling with it, because I guarantee you, all of you will be guaranteed at least one online class. And I know some of you are saying right now, that, oh, I don't do good in online. I, I, I'm not going to be successful in online. I can't do online. I need, that. I need a seated class. <coughs> Why do we do online classes? Well, I'm going to tell you, industry told us this. Industry <coughs> said, you know what? I'll use auto mechanics. Ford, General Motors, Toyota, Honda, we partner with all of them. They've come and said, guess what? We're not going to take all of our mechanics and send them to some manufacturing training school for every fix and every need. It's not going to happen. But we're going to send out tons of online training modules that they will have to complete. So if the student isn't prepared to be successful in an online world, eh, they're not going to be prepared for work. So guess what we do? We make you go through an online experience so that, again, you're prepared to be successful out there. So it's there. There's a reason for it. If you're struggling with it, you can put your head in the sand. Or you talk to Barbara, Dr. Prim right there. She is an expert at every one of our general education courses. She knows each and every one of them. And all of our instructors do as well. If you have a problem with the instructor, you can go right to the department chair. Take advantage of those resources. We have a student success center here. In fact, we have a vice president that's dedicated just to student success. In fact, you'll find out, you may think that the faculty and the staff and all that, you know, uh, they don't want me to be as successful. It's, that's not the way it is here at Rankin. It really is not. Everybody here with a Rankin logo, even the existing students, are here to help you be successful. That vice president for student success runs a complete office that includes tutors and mentors and all of those things. In fact, maybe you come and you forgot your solid black or brown belt, which is a requirement to go to class. Solid black or brown. It can't be orange. It can't be red. Solid black or brown. Guess what? Go up to Student Success, I guarantee you they have an extra belt up there for you to borrow for that day. You forgot a pencil, you forgot a paper, you forgot a notepad, you forgot a highlighter. Go to Student Success, they will get you set up with those resources. They're there to help you. But again, you've got to ask for help. You've got to ask for help. Your success is depending upon you making sure that you ask for help if you need it, right? The other thing I'll say is you're only going to get out of this what you put into it. I will tell you that. One of the hardest things that we teach in every one of our programs is how to teach yourself. Because we're not going to be there for very long. And do I have any IT students in here? Okay, that's a great example, right? So I don't know if it's Windows 10 or Windows 20. I couldn't tell you. I, I push the button and there's a different operating system every time I turn the computer on, it seems, right? Somebody else installs it for me. I, it just happens. That technology changes so very fast, I can't possibly teach you what you're going to be working on when you graduate four semesters from now. You can't. It's not there, right? Every six months, the shelf life for a Microsoft product, it gets replaced. So the hardest thing is, again, teaching you how to teach yourself. <coughs> teaching you how to troubleshoot. And not just troubleshoot the computer that's broke or the network that's down or the car that won't start, but how to troubleshoot other things in your life that you've run up against. What do I do when this happens? Right? How do you troubleshoot it? How do you fix it? What is the solution? That's only going to happen if you are inquisitive, if you ask. We can put the material in front of you. We can put the curriculum in front of you. You can go through the steps. But unless you ask yourself why, and don't 
don't settle unless you understand the why, you're not going to be successful long term. And that's what we're all about. So please make sure that you understand that. That's what I mean by you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. You're only going to get out of it what you put into it. Please make sure that you ask those questions, whether it be, again, of your instructors, your co-students, myself, got an open door policy, any of that. Any questions about Rankin Technical College or what you've actually embarked upon, what you put yourself into, right? Any questions about any of that? No? Well, that's good. I didn't do that great of a job. I didn't answer everything. Does anybody in the audience have any questions about it? Where did you go to school? Where did I go to school? That's a great question. I'm a graduate of Rankin Technical College. I went to school here. In fact, my dad's a graduate. My son's a graduate. Like I said, I really believe in that mission. It's, it's, it's done me very well. It's done my family very well. And I strongly encourage anybody. There's a lot of options out there. Military is for some. Four-year university is necessary. You want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a vet? That's not us. There's other wonderful educational institutions that do it. I believe in what Rankin does. And it's not the end. Because I, you ask me where I went to school, I'll tell you if you don't. Walk in my office, there's a lot of degrees on the walls, but there's only one school that I've mentioned, right? Because that's the one that really started for me and that did it for me. I went to other schools, I got different degrees, there's bachelor's and master's and all that stuff in there. However, I will tell you, because I started here, the rest made a lot more sense. Some of it was just because, you know what, when you wanted to move up, you had to have a piece of paper. That's not what Rankin's about, though. It's about providing you with those skills Again, that comprehensive education that will prepare you to go to work in your chosen career field. So, I didn't plan that either, but it worked out very well. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> so now it gets to be to the point of what this is really all about then, right? So you signing basically saying, hey, I'm serious about going to Rangan. And here's, again, when does the first day of school start for you all, you know? Uh, April. April? It's, yeah, August? Some people start in August, some people start yeah, midway sure. through, some people start in the summer, which I believe is uh, June. So there's different start dates for each and every one of you. There's going to be things that happen to you between now and then. There are going to be things that happen to you. And you're going to say, oh man, I, I can't go because of, eh, get rid of the excuses. If you can't solve the excuse, come and find us, we'll help you solve the excuse. Or we'll be honest and say, yeah, you're right, you're probably not ready, you're probably not ready. How many of you are still in high school right now? So I'm going to tell you, if you don't graduate high school, you're not ready for us, right? So that's very important. That's going to be one that I'm going to say I can't do anything about. you got to figure that out. Right? That doesn't mean it's forever, though. It's a, okay, when is the next start, right? How can we fix this? How can we solve this? I don't have the money. I don't have the down payment. I missed this date. I missed that date. You're going to get little emails and little letters from us that encourage you to do this, 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 this. If you don't understand what this is, you've got to let us know. You've got a wonderful recruitment team out there. I guarantee you, whether it be Jay, whether it be Jeff, whether it be Frank, Brandon, whatever member of our recruitment team, they know the answers. And if they don't, they will help you find the answer. We've got financial aid. We've got the department heads. We've got the division chairs. We can help you solve those issues. So before you say, oh, I can't because of, give us an opportunity to at least address it. If you still don't want to go, then by all means don't go. You know, I, I'm going to tell you this. If, if you're not into whatever major you, you chose, if you don't like cars you're going to automotive, you're going to hate ranking because we're going to put you with real cars. It's not fake cars over there. They have real wheels. Electricity is real electricity. It's not one of those. The saws down in carpentry. We build homes. Those saws don't stop when they hit your finger, right? It's gonna, if you're afraid of that, and you're not willing to follow safety precautions and rules, that's not we're not for you. And you'll find that out real, real fast. So if you're not serious about going into technical education, eh, this might not be a good match. But if you're serious about a future in a technical education with a great career, because you know what, you're gonna have many jobs in your career, we're, we're the place for you. So don't let a hiccup stop you from, from, from showing up. So that's what we're going to do next. I think Mr. Boyd is going to 
invite different people up. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so we're going to do it alphabetical. What you're going to do is you're going to come up and you're going to sit next to me. We're going to sign some documents. We're going to give you some goodies. And then after that, when that's all done, there'll be some photo opportunities. But then we want to get you out there and show you what we're doing. So there's plenty of tour guides here. Hopefully we pair you up with whatever department you're going into. And they'll get you a chance to, to go through. And I, I think I did. Larry, did I, uh, did I? Did you get a chance to be introduced? Yep. What is Latrina somewhere around? Latrina was back there. We actually have residence hall, uh, director of residence hall here. So you have an opportunity to, to visit the dorm if you're if you're a resident or if you're thinking about being a resident. I would strongly encourage you to visit that. We got a 210 bed residence hall here. So again, I encourage all of you to spend as much or as little time as you want to today. You can spend the weekend here, like I said, we'll put you up in the dorm room if you want. But I do want to be cognizant of your time. So we're going to start with. And I apologize now if I butcher your name. I apologize now because there's going to be somebody's name that I butcher, right? But we are going to start with Jakari Beck. Is Jakari here? So I'm going to put each and every student on the spot. Jakari's first. So Jakari gets to, to listen to what I'm going to ask, and then all of you can cheat and listen to it, right? So, so Jakari, you're going to tell us what high school you're currently going to or that you graduated from, and then what program you're going into. Um, I attend East Edmund High School and I will be um, construction and carpentry. Very good. Carpentry and building construction. Excellent choice. So if you're going to sign this, since your name's on the top, and then I'm going to sign it. <coughs> and it's February the 20th of 2020. 2-20-2020. It's an interesting date. <laughs> I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you the pen. I'm going to give you this neat hat that I think they're going to want you to put on for a photo opportunity. And inside the bag are some things that are going to be useful for you, right? So when I say useful, uh, there's a lanyard. You're going to find out every student, every employee is required to carry an ID. So there's a lanyard in there. There's also a clip if you choose to wear it around your neck like Mr. Panky is. That option's there. There's also a clip like I have. So there's some things in there that will be very useful to you. And if you want to join us at some of our events, such as open house, uh, shadow attacks, land parties, if you're into the IT thing, you don't even have to be in IT. You can be into cars and, and still come to the land party. All those dates are listed in here. So some information there, OK? So again, very good. The guess what? Do you want to stand here? Standing or sitting? She's the expert. I don't know anything. Sitting? Just stay sitting. Makes it easier. And hold on, there's somebody else. So now we get to look at that camera. <laughs> That's right, great. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> Right away from the beginning. 
fact, if you got that partner sure sign, you have to sign contract. Very good. Which, which dealership are you going to? Uh, very good. So if you go to Victor Lane Ford in Litchfield, he'll take care of you, right? So very good. I'll let you sign that. So we actually have a General Motors ASAP and a Ford Asset, a Honda Pack, and a Toyota T10 program all on campus. So congratulations. I think you're supposed to hold the hands for a little while. There you go. <laughs>
Farm and Lewis and Clark Ferguson. Oh, very good. We love Lewis and Clark Ferguson. And what firm are you going into? I'm doing diesel. Diesel, very good. At uh, the Wentzville location? Yes. Okay. Very good. Excellent. We actually have students from all three locations here today, so that's awesome. We offer diesel at Perryville and Wentzville, but we do not offer diesel here at St. Louis. So, So usually there's a big, uh, so what, what diesel engine is your diesel engine? I don't have one. That's better yet. Very good. Maybe you'll get one. Hold on. Very good. This is yours as well. Charles High. Uh, also, uh, yeah, excellent. We love the FFA groups 
basketball, right? Mm -hmm. so. Uh, general Automotive. Uh, very good. Excellent. 
Carvon Ward. Stay there until everybody doesn't have a camera up, right?
face hurts. <laughs> <laughs> mine does too. Well, they're also hard. Well, it's killing me. Two more there, and then we good. Excellent. Thank you all. So here, what we'll do. So uh, Paul, come on up. Paul is information technology, application web development. So if you're interested in IT application web development, this is the guy you're going to go with. Chris, come on up. If you're interested in carpentry, I know some of you are carpentry. That's Chris right here, Mr. Brigaman. Larry. Larry is auto collision repair. So if you're wanting to see auto collision repair, that's that's the guy, Kelly. Kelly's architecture. So I know I think we have uh, at least one architecture. So that's Kelly, Bill, Bill and Jeff are automotive maintenance and Ford Asset, General Motors ASAP, Honda Pact, and Toyota T10. Right. So between those two, they will get you that area. Sean. Sean is all about diesel. So I think there was two diesel people, I believe. So you'll be with Sean. And did we skip anybody? Is there anybody else that I did not represent in this group? Was there a program that, uh, that you signed up for that I didn't represent with one of these people standing here? No? Nope. Everybody's represented? No. So there you go. You guys, again, don't leave hungry. There's suites back there, but they'll take you to the, to the areas, answer any questions you may have that are specific. Thank you for joining us today. And again, congratulations. Welcome to Rankin Technical College. Look forward to having you here. There is no question.